All right, guys, let me try to catch up to you. Can somebody shut out that light that says whiteboard? All right, there you go, there you go. So first of all, I want to see if you guys can extend that idea that a square root cuts things in half multiplicatively. So the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of G12 G6. G6. And to check yourself, you just multiply this by itself. And sure enough, 6G6 six times itself would be 36G12. You guys see what I'm saying? You can always check your work to a square root by multiplying the thing by itself, what you get. Cube root, you multiply by itself three times, so forth. Okay. Notice how I had 36 times G12, but I just did each part. That same idea holds here. I know I'm kind of jumping down here. I don't care. Uh, I can do the cube root of 27, which is 3, over the cube root of 125, 5. Man. The same way I can do square root of 36 times square root of G12. Same thing happens for division. Not a big deal. How are we doing so far? Is that cool? Okay. Don't tell guys. So here, the same idea, cube root of negative 8. Negative 2. Yeah, and just to say something, very quickly in the homework, they'll start saying things like, assuming the variable is positive. Right, because otherwise, remember, what is the square root of x squared? Uh, absolute. absolute value of x, right? Any even root. Why does this not matter? G to the 6 will always be positive. You guys see that? No. If I put an absolute value on this, that's overkill. It's like saying the absolute value of x squared. Well, x squared is always positive using real numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. So, so your section 10.1 is the only section where they're going to want absolute value answers for your even roots. You've got to be a little careful. Cube roots. They're the more laid back. Odd roots are very laid back. They don't need absolute values to help them. They're fine. Even roots, oh shit. It can't come out negative. They sometimes need absolute values to help them. Uh, and what about W12? Cut it into three parts and you get W4. So here's where that's going to come into play. Now, now radicals can be written as powers. And powers are based on what? What are powers based on? Multiplication. Multiplication. So they will sure as all hell not work well with subtraction or addition. They don't work for shit with those. There's, you can't. So what do I have to do first with x squared minus x plus 16? Factor. 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 And what do you get when you factor it? X minus 4. X minus 4. And x minus 4. Yeah. Negative 4, negative root 16. Negative 4, negative 4 makes negative 8 when you add them. And what's, square, what's something times itself? That thing? Square. Square. Let me see if you guys get this. If the square root of x squared is absolute value of x, the square root of that thing squared is? x minus, x minus 4. Absolute. absolute value of that thing. It's absolute. Yeah. If you, if you don't put them there, you're saying that the answer could be negative. Because what could x be? Anything it wants to be. So what if x is 0? You tell me the answer could be negative 4. That's impossible. A square root can't come out negative. Okay. Yes, ma'am? Uh, for opposite, just define this for the two or also behind for like 4? Yes. Even roots require that the answer come out positive. Oh. Right. I like it. So, for example, let's, let's run down a few examples. Uh, so the cube root of x cubed is what? X, I love it. Because cube roots, odd roots, they are laid back. They're like, whatever you want to be, you can stay that. Uh, sixth root of x to the sixth, absolute value of x. Because the sixth root has to come up positive. X could be negative. Oh shit, let me cover my ass with an absolute value. This is something that the book very quickly kind of goes away from because. It's like one extra step on top of all this other stuff. And it becomes much more important when we get to solving radical equations. But in section 10.1, there will be some that you have to put absolute value signs on. 
and Ted won. And this kind of problem you see a lot, the one we just did, where you have to factor first, but then the square root has to come out positive, so you've got to cover your ass, put ask your values on it, just to make sure it comes out positive. So you want to put absolute values on positive roots? Even roots. Even roots. I love it. So why did I not really need one on the first problem? Isn't that an even root? But why does this not need it? Do you guys see why? G to the six will always come out positive. positive. So I don't need to cover my ass because it comes. So so, uh, what is the square root of x to the fourth? X, x squared. Do I need to ask you guys? No. No, because x squared is always positive for real numbers, and that's all we're using right now is real numbers. I like it. Coolness. Coolness. Did you get penalized if you put an absolute? No, I just put a note. So I mean, if you did this, technically you're right. But I'll just say this is unnecessary or something. I'm not going to take points off. But I really want you to see why you don't need it. You don't need to cover your ass if it might be negative. If there's no way it could be negative. That's all I'm saying right there. Okay. Maybe. But what about this? What's the fifth root of x minus 7 to the fifth power? Absolute value of x minus 7. No, no minus because 5 is... What kind of root is it? It's an odd root. Odd root? Odd roots are laid back. Or whatever you want to be. We know this, because what's the cube root of negative 8? So odd roots, let them stay whatever sign they are. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So the odd roots can come out negative. They have to come out negative sometimes to make the inside number negative. So I, can't, I don't want to put at you guys on any odd root. Any odd root, there's always that one guy, negative, 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 hey, it's still negative. Any even root, everybody pairs up. It's always positive. Oh shit. I thought it makes sense. Some kind of sense. A little bit of sense? No sense at all. Some of you guys are like, I'll just put extra values every damn time. <laughs> if he just said it, you wouldn't take points. Alright. If you put after values on an odd root, let me just make this really clear, I will take points off. Because then it will be wrong. I really want you to understand. Does that make sense? If you put absolute values on this problem, you're wrong. Because it has to allow to be negative if that's what it is. But if you put absolute values here where it's not really necessary but it doesn't change the answer, I'll just put a little note saying this is not necessary. You guys? All right. I just want to make sure you guys weren't getting excited for the wrong reason. You said it was a change. No. <laughs> now here, this is sort of from the next section, but I really want this to make sense. We've done this forever. You can't multiply two numbers unless they have the same root. So, have you ever done four times two ever in your life? Yes. And what'd you get? Eight. Maybe not every time. Maybe in the first time you did it, you didn't get eight. But, but they have the same root, namely none. So that's why I'm allowed to multiply them. So what's the square root of four times the square root of two? Square root of eight. They have the same root. I'm allowed to multiply them if they have the same root. And the real reason that is, I really want this, I'm going to show you more work than you have to do. Some of you guys will never understand why I do that, but oh well. Square root of 5 is 5 to the uh, one half. And I love it. Some of you guys are like, that's what I did. You said that's not what I was supposed to do. But I'm showing you why what you're supposed to do works. Uh, so this will be 15 to the one half. one half. Isn't this one half power like this? I, could I undistribute it? Do you guys see that? Yeah. Because then it would be one half on that, one half on that. I'm just doing that backwards. So it becomes one big ass square root. And what's 5 times 15? 75. So it's the square root of 75. So what I'm saying is, why do all this shit? Square root of 5 times square root of 15 is square root of 75. And I circled it like I'm done. I'm not really done. Five. Yes. So, so uh, I'm trying to figure out the order I want to do this in. So let me, let me ask you this. Do uh, you see this one I just did? This is a good way to explain this, I think. Let's try it out, John. Let's try it out. Making up teaching methods on the go. I like this, though. I should teach it like this always. Watch. Square root of 4 times square root of 2 is square root of 8. But why is that kind of silly? What is there before I got to 8? That's kind of like, well, why didn't you just do this? Do you guys see part of that that I could just do? What is the square root of 4? 2. 2. So somehow these are the same number. If you put in your calculator square root of 8, you will get 
twice square root of 2. You get the same number. You'll get uh, 2.82 something, right? Oh, you can try it out if you want. See, see what happens. Uh, keep me honest, right? So, so here's the idea. If it starts off, can I do the square root of 8? What, like the square root of 9 you can do. What's the square root of 9? 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 8 is a number that when I multiply by itself, it gets 8. Can you give me that number? No. 2.827. Yeah, what I just said earlier. But you can't do this. It's some ugly number. So what we do instead, you ready? What's 10 divided by 2? Uh, all right. What's 11 divided by 2? 5 and? Well, that, now watch. Isn't 11 10 plus 1? It's amazing, Jeff. And then I can do 10 divided by 2 and 1 divided by 2. That's the legal way to do that. So I do the part that I can do. And I leave the part that I can't do. And we happen to write it like five and a half. Okay. That was just more work than you would ever do on that problem. But again, I'm explaining to you why it works. Now, some of you guys are looking at me like, that's great. Some of you guys maybe have never seen it done like that before. But that's really what you're doing. And that's what the remainder means. It's the extra shit that didn't let it go in evenly. And have one too many. Stupid 11. If you're just 10, it'd be easy. So here... If I think about this as 8 is really 4 times 2, and I can do the square root of 4. So the square root of 4 times square root of 2 is square root of 4 times square root of 2. The square root of 4 I can do, just like I could do this part. And the 2 is the remainder, with the 2 left inside. So there's too much shit. If only it was 4, not 8. So what's extra? There's an extra 2. Well, look. Square root of 4 is 2, and the extra factor of 2 is still in there. So how do I do the problem we have? Square root of 75. What part of 75 can I do the square root of? But see, 15 and 5 I can't do. Oh, I see what you mean. Sure. But a little more direct route. I will show you a different way to do this. 75, 3 quarters makes 75. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 3 is? I don't freaking know. Third base. No, I didn't cross that Okay. You guys, you guys see that? So this is the same thing as reducing fractions, to be honest. It's the same thing as, uh, not reducing, but making them mixed numbers. So I got a, 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 night, a whole number and then a part left over. That's what a mixed number is. So this is very much related to that. I do the part of 75 that I can, that's the 25, and I don't do the part that I can't. It's amazing philosophy of life, right? Do what you can, don't do what you can't. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So, so real quick, just to go to part G, because it's the same idea, except now it's a cube root. So what number can you do the cube root of that goes into 8? Eight, right? Mm -hmm. So you can break this up as the cube root of eight times the cube root of ten. Are those not, those are the same thing, right? <laughs> eight times ten is eighty. It's amazing. But the cube root of eight is two. two. What's the cube root of ten? Five two five. I don't know. It's cube root of ten. Ten. Right. Thank you.
So 4 times 7. I can take the square root of 4, but I can't take the square root of 7. Duh. Now the other way to do that problem is to take 28 and just break it all the way down. What kind of root do I have? I have a square, square root. Two. So it's always looking for groups of two things. Now, the answer I sometimes get from people is this. That makes no sense. But do you see where somebody would get that from? Yeah. They see a seven, and they see some twos. But what's the thing that should come out? What should come out of there? Is the two should come out, and the seven is all by himself. All by himself. Right. So he stays in all by himself, watching Game of Thrones. Or whatever it is. Huh? So, so I gave you several more examples. You know, this way you got to remember the, the numbers you can square root are your squares, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, this way, a lot of students like this way because you know how to break numbers all the way down, but then there's so many places you can make mistakes. But if you like this way, it works. It totally does. Just don't make mistakes. That's all. So my Math 90 students, this is the exact same thing I gave you back then, but still... If you haven't already started doing this, try to try to work on these. You can do it either method you want. All I ask is that you get it right. That's all that I ask.